Hello, welcome to the show. My name is Vern and uh, for the next little bit we will be talking about JW.org and are they losing their charity image? So this is a question that uh, some have and especially with the recent news and this is today's news we'll be covering on uh, the charity inquiry. And we're going to look at the uh, watchdog reports on investigation into the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain. Now, I did not know that this was going on, so this was brand new for me this morning. And this article was published August 4th, 2023. So this, this has been going on for a while. So for, for those of you out there um, that have been XJWs for a while, know about this, and especially those in Britain. So now the investigation has been released and uh, this, this kind of um, tells me something. And uh, when we look around the world and we see all of the Jehovah's Witnesses, all the, how big the organization is now, it sits on every mountain, every continent, every country. Uh, JW Org is huge. Uh, it's a huge structure and it's infiltrated because of the door-to-door -door work and they all go out and I was one for 30 years and pioneering and going out to all these doors and we felt greater and better than uh, the rest of the world. But uh, I'm going to read a little portion of the Bible and I want to I want to get your opinion on this just before we cover the, the news article. And this is taken from Revelation chapter 17 and uh, we're going to start uh, reading here, um, verse 3. It says, And he carried me away in the power of the Spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet-colored wild beast that was full of blasphemous names, and that had seven heads and ten horns. So it talked about the color purple in some of the other Bible texts and uh yeah revelation and uh so it uses the color purple now that color uh is a color that uh we think of the purple triangle so it is a color related to the organization in one way or another now the woman was clothed clothed in purple and scarlet and she was adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls and we think of jw org it's deemed as one of the wealthiest organizations religious organizations on earth and it says, And she had in her hand a golden cup that was full of disgusting things, and the unclean things of her sexual immorality. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And it goes on to say, And on her forehead was written the name of a mystery. And we think of the finished mystery book. Well, here it is. The mystery. It's Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and of the disgusting things on earth. And I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the holy ones and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. So when we look at and we narrow in on this organization, it is blood guilty. How many thousands and thousands of deaths have, have there been over the blood doctrine, over the organ, not using organ, over smallpox vaccines? These were all things that this organization demonized at one time or another. And today they still demonize blood. And they, ha they have read the scriptures, read into them, and they try to justify them. And now we're dealing with an organization that has no regard for children. And this is what, uh, what's happening right now. We see that uh, the, uh, the children are being looked at and it's our children that uh, the charities are looking at how are how are these charity organizations treating the children so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that uh, we're gonna we're gonna get right into uh, an article here we're gonna move over to charity Canada and uh, charity Canada I want to use that as an example just to show you how charities are viewing how the watchtower's image is in the world. Now, when we look at their image in Canada here, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Canada, 
Uh, here's their rating. Fi fi financial transparency is an X. Uh, results of reporting is an F. Demonstrated impact is low. Need for funding, they don't need any. You see, it shows they have all this money in the red, but they don't do it. They have no programs. No programs, just money in the bank. And cents to the cause, for, for a dollar donated after overhead cost of fund, fundraising and admin management excluding surplus, these 99 cents are available for programs. So, so Jehovah's Witnesses are only using 1% of their, their, their funding that's coming in for overhead, and 99 cents on the dollar is available to help the poor um, help people in Canada here. This is Canadian charity and ca Canada's looking at them too. And here's what they say. Here's if, if, if you want to read about Jehovah's Witness and their image about being a charity in Canada, here it is. And these are not my words. This is Charity Intelligence Canada. It says overview about the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Canada. It says Watchtower is a zero star. Not a one or a two, but a zero star charity with low demonstrated impact. Well, zero impact. The charity does not have a website and reports very little about its $30 million in programs and their results. You see, Watchtower is sending $30 million over to the U.S. to headquarters so they can get richer. Fight all the legal bills, perhaps. It says... Watchtower has a large funding has large funding reserves and is not financially transparent. And here's what Charity Intelligence Canada is telling the world. Right here I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to move it up so you guys can see that right above my head. It says before you give read Charity Intelligence report. So basically they're saying don't give to these these yahoos. They, they score X's and F's. If we know anything about grade school, that means you failed. Watchtower has failed in Canada. Their image, their charity image is zero in Canada. Well, let's move on. This, uh, let's look at Britain. Let's see what's happening there. Well, there's a, there's a watch. This report was just released uh, August 4th, published 2023. And this has been going on for a while. And we're going to show you how Watchtower uses all their legal tactics to put off things, put off things, because they're not transparent, because they know they have some serious issues regarding the way they treat children. All over the world, they're being looked at. And if we think this is happening just here in England, the Queen, the, where the Queen is, well, it's happening everywhere. And we can be guaranteed, well, right now in Canada, there's, there's a uh, class action lawsuit going on regarding Chauve's witnesses and uh, sexual abuse with, uh, within Quebec. Uh, we see in Norway, they lost their charity status. We see in Pennsylvania and the USA, it's all blown up. It's all coming out. And then we see what we've seen what happened in Australia with the Royal Commission. And now we've seen what's happening in New Zealand. Watched her saying, we don't look after children. We don't want to be a part of your, your whole study. You see, Watchtower fights and fights and fights and says, we're not part of your study. But yet, Watchtower wants to be a charity, recognized as a charity, all over the world, just like all the other religions. So the governments are saying, okay, if you want to be a charity and you want to be recognized like the chari all the other charities, well then, you have to be transparent. And Watchtower says, no, 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 no. We don't want to be transparent, but we want the charity handouts. You see, this is how Watchtower is. And they will fight and fight tooth and nail in court and stretch things to try to get that charity handout. And it's for the recognition. It's for, for Jehovah's name. You see, if Jehovah's name is important here, well, it's been muddied in the waters for decades and it's been covered up. So now it's all being revealed. Watchtower is is trying their best to keep it covered up, but it can't stay covered up forever. So here it is. The Charity Commission has today published a report of its inquiry into the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain. So the inquiry opened in May of 2014 to the investigation, the charity's handling, and that's the Watchtowers, right? They're the charity. 
and their oversight and safeguarding matters, including child protection and advice providing to individual Jehovah's Witness congregation. So <clears throat> this, this followed significant interaction between the commission and the charity since October 2007 concerning the way in which safeguarding incidents or failures were handled within the, the organization, the JW organization, and, a, and specifically the adequacy of the guideline the guidance that the charity that Jehovah's Witnesses provided to various uh, Jehovah's Witness congregations. So the, organ the JW organization reported to the independent inquiry into child sex abuse uh, that a total of 67 allegations of child abuse were made between 2009 and 2019 against 67 individuals involved in the JW congregations, whether as elders, ministerial servants, or otherwise. So <clears throat> I want to go over to the, uh, this is another, um, this is the whole inquiry here, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm at the bottom, I want to read this to you. But I'll just show you where, where I'm reading from. So this is what it looks like. I'll put this link in, in, uh, in below in the description. But this is this is it. This is all the uh, the charity that's been revealed from England. The inquiry into the Watchtower. It talks all about it. So what I'm reading to you is kind of a synopsis of this report here. Now, we're going to go to the bottom of this report, and and this report's good because it shows the whole structure of uh, of how Jehovah's Witnesses are set up. The governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses is in the U.S. And they own everything and they run everything and they're trying to hide behind all these shell companies. They have all these shell companies, some are registered as charities and some are not. Do you notice how the Christian congregation here is not registered as a charity? But yet the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain is registered as a charity. Uh, I'll just put this down uh, above my head here. You notice the Kingdom Hall Trust is reg registered as a charity. And... Why do they still have an International Bible Students Association registered as a charity? It seems as though they have a bunch of charities to hide behind, like all these charities. So what's happening is uh, all over the world, Jehovah's Witnesses are called, the organization is being called to account for all of its actions. And especially if they want handouts. And if they want to be recognized as a charity, that, that means they get tax exemptions in all the countries. They get help in building new kingdom halls, places of worship. There's, there's all kinds of grants that the government puts forth and gives this money out for free to these religious organizations because the government believes in freedom of religion. The government believes in helping people uh, spiritually. But when it comes to abuse and abuse of children, this is where all the governments all over the world are saying enough is enough. We are not uh, standing up for this. So we've seen the Catholics, they were exposed 2018, you know, still to this day. The Mormons, now the Jehovah's Witnesses are exposed. So it's like we read in the outset in the scriptures, you know, it talks about Babylon the Great. It talks about all of these uh, religions that are full of sexuality and immorality and they're hiding it and they're covering it up and it's all within the religion. So <clears throat> when we read the chair, the, uh, go back to this, it, uh, the, the, uh, we're reading here about the, uh, 67 allegations of child abuse that were made, whether as elders, ministerial servants or otherwise, there's a breakdown in the report here and I'm going to go right to the bottom because it shows it. And I had it highlighted, yeah. I had it highlighted here. Hmm. Uh, it's a big report. So now it says right at the bottom, though not disclosed to the inquiry, this information was disclosed to the, uh, whatever, these, there's a CCJW. It's, it's not the charity, the CCJW. So I'm thinking the CCJW is XJWs. So 
they they couldn't get the information out of the uh, watchtower. <laughs> the, the watchtower kept stonewalling them, stonewalling them, and uh, uh, rejecting everything. And then it's in court, and then it has to go to a higher court, and then it's rejected. They, it's sto one stonewall after another. So finally, they went to uh, CCJW, XJWs, not the charity, as part of its uh, thematic strand on child abuse in the religious settings. And the report states that uh, the JW records show that the allegations concerning 67 individuals re were reported to their branch office with the previous 10 years. This included 25 allegations against elders. So out of the 67, 25 were elders allegations, 32 against ministerial servants. So now we're uh, 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 32 allegations against ministerial servants and and 10 people accused of abuse within the institutional context. So it's mostly elders and ministerial servants. It, it looks to me like that's uh, 50, 57. Yeah, 57 of the 67 were elders and ministerial servants. So that tells us as a common person, the XJW that was in the organization, that this was all hidden. And there was a lot and is a lot hidden and there's a lot to come out yet. So uh, what did they find find in the uh, in this uh, thing here? The commission's report is critical of the charities, trustees, so the Jehovah's Witnesses, they're the charity, their trustees' conduct during the inquiry, expressing the view that on occasions the trustees were not as straightforward or transparent as they should have been. So that's what we found in Canada. We read that in the, trans the Canada uh, report here, <clears throat> Charity Intelligence Canada, that they're not transparent. And they're finding the same thing in Britain. They found the same thing in the Royal Commission in Australia. They're finding that in New Zealand. And, you know, the governments are getting sick and tired of this, and they're not going to stand for this. Why would you keep feeding an organization money as a and keeping them as a charity when they're not transparent? Why, why would we? Why would we support that? So it goes on to say they weren't transparent as they should have been, uh, not as straightforward and transparent as they should have been in relation to the JW child safeguarding responsibilities. And you see, this is what the organization is hiding. They're standing behind that two witness rule still. And, and it says here, and that during certain phases of the investigation, the trustees this is the JW elders, the communications were, were protracted. They were taken back with the charities, the JW orgs responses often failing to provide information requested or sufficient clarity to satisfy the inquiry, giving rise to further questions. So stone, one stone wall after another, that's how the Jehovah's Witnesses are handling it, but it's backfiring. Here it is. Here's the timeline. They're showing the timelines. It's an embarrassment to any organization to have this kind of stuff on the internet. Any kind of a religious charity to have this is just embarrassing. Now, 2007, it started. The commission opens it, opens it up and uh, it's, it's put off. The Bible Tract Society, they agree to develop a policy. So they say, yeah, okay, we'll have to develop something. So by 2011, uh, how many years later? 7 to 11, that's four years later, the Watchtower distributes child protection policy within the elders. Uh, 2013, following the conviction of former ministerial servants of the congregation, the Charity Commission writes to the Watchtower to raise concerns about the policy. And the commission seeks advice, which finds the policy to be at odds with the UK legislation guidance. So the charity updates and recirculates the policy. And then in 2014, the commission meets with the charity, JWs, to raise its concerns about the revised policy, which does not address the concerns. And the trustees do not clearly set out the watchtower is no longer responsible for drafting dismantling policy nor do they state the organization is now responsible for this. You see, JW Org tried to make all the, well, they, they did. They made all these shelf companies all over the world to protect themselves. But uh, the governments aren't buying into this nonsense. 
So uh, it says the Charity Commission opens a statutory inquiry. August, the Watchtower challenges the decision to open the inquiry and the legal orders requiring the charity to submit information to the commission, beginning a period of several years during which the work of the inquiry is constrained. 2016, December, Supreme Court refuses the Watchtower's permission to appeal as the decision. In 2019, the Charity Commission informs the Watchtower that it had commissioned the uh, safeguarding group to undertake independent reviews. So uh, <clears throat> what happened next? The Charity, the Watchtower, cancels the meeting asking to provide a formal response. See, that's how they stonewall, meeting after meeting after meeting. So you only stonewall things if you're guilty. And they're trying to use as much legal leverage as they can because they're, they're, they're just blatantly guilty of hiding pedophilia within the congregation. They've done it for years. They've done it for decades. They've done it for 150 years. And now um, they're supposed to implement new policy in Britain. They didn't. It didn't meet any of the criteria. So... Remember Tony, uh, was it Tony Morris? We're never going to change. So 2020, uh, Charity provides inquiry with written opinion from a safeguarding expert, which states the report was out of date. Watchtower demands the inquiry is terminated, claiming the grounds for the inquiry no longer exist. So the Charity provides inquiry from a safeguarding expert. You know who that is? Massimo. And if you look at Massimo, and I'm just, this is my sup supposition. I don't know if it is for sure, but they're using this Massimo guy as their expert, this uh, bitter winner. And I, one of the latest things I've seen on Massimo is he's some head of some demon cult. Quite seriously, I'm looking at doing an article, a future show on this. It's so interesting. But anyways, June, after careful consideration, the commission refused the JWs. In July, the JWs... Uh, instigates <clears throat> notice the word they use july the charity the, the J, jw's instigates a judicial review they instigate it like that's like instigating a riot <laughs> you know that's how they're looking at this organization it is not looked at its image is gone so uh, here they want procedures against the commission's refusal to conclude the inquiry and re-inspect the disclosure can you imagine 2021, the trustees, the corporation with which the inquiry improves following permission from the High Court of the Watchtower to bring judicial review procedures against the commission. What? They want to bring procedures against the commission. Trustees' cooperation with the inquiry improves following permission from a High Court for Watchtower to bring judicial review procedures against the commission. 2023, the commission concludes that the Watchtower is not the organization that is currently directly responsible for the safety of JW beneficiaries, that the Watchtower is not currently directly responsible. So here's the ends. Uh, notes to the editor. The Charity Commission is the independent non-ministerial government department that registers and regulates charities in England and Wales. Its purpose is to ensure charity can thrive and inspire trust so that people can improve lives and strengthen society. You see, that's what all charities all over the world are trying to do. They're trying to improve the lives of our communities. Now, when we allow um, questionable people, people that, ha that are pedophilia, that haven't been turned over to the police, that have been sheltered or hidden, within a religious organization, and, and that religious organization's mandate is to send all those people door to door, and the way that they repent in the organization, guess what, is by going door to door, by having a higher service time, they call it, a higher door to door ministry record. And that's how a perpetrator in the organization that apologized and, and, and wanted to uh, repent, well, that's the repentant, is putting them out there with the children. And you see, that's not going to fly. That doesn't fly. It has to go to the police. They have to be professionally dealt with. The Jehovah's Witness organization does not have the ability within to deal with any of this stuff professionally. And, the, and this is the problem. And, but yet they want the charity handouts. Well, here it says, in September 2021, the independent inquiry into child sexual exploitation 
reported on its investigation into child protection in the religious organizations and settings. The report refers to the Commission's statutory inquiry into Watchtower and cites from oral evidence given by Commission staff about the challenges faced by the regulatory by the regulator in its investigation. That report is publicly available. And that's another discussion. The full inquiry report is available. That's what I, I had. We'll post that so you guys can look at it. But listen to this. Um, and, and this is from the government report. Uh, here they're saying the independent inquiry into child sexual exploitation reported on its investigation into child protection in religious organizations and settings. So that report and that part of the government is looking into the religion. And that sounds pretty uh, serious, child sexual exploitation. So this is where it's going. This is the image that, uh, that we see happening with, uh, with Jehovah's Witnesses, with JW.org. Are they losing their charity image? That's, that's the question. So I'll let you be the judge and you can answer that question. I don't think it's too hard, but for you and I, we're just going to keep living our day with love. And we enjoy the benefits from that because, well, heck, the animals like to be petted and, uh, you know, the kitty walks around and the dogs are in and follow you around and you become all of a sudden an important person on the farm anyways. So if that's the way it is in, in real life out there in the matrix of things where you guys live, you know, maybe you're in the big city and uh, you're, you're living in a, or working in an office. Well, if you live your life with love, that's what you're going to get back. That's the law of attraction. Jesus says you will reap what you sow. So thanks again, guys, and we will see you next time. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.